Now, I really like the expression, the elephant in the room, because it's supposed to indicate something that everyone sees, but no one talks about. And in this case, the room is Europe. Now, this is a difficult discussion to have, but we need to have it. So I won't say that many crimes have been happening in Europe lately, and uh, this leads to a growing feeling of insecurity among, amongst its people. Now, I want to, I, I, the way I see it, in a relatively healthy social order, people are supposed to be able to express their concerns to politicians, and politicians, among other th things, need to sort of care about law enforcement. But it seems to me nowadays that we have many, many, many uh, indications that the governments in Western societies are much more interested in just virtue signaling and, and having a ticking box agenda. And this raises the question as to whether really they care about the people or they pretend to do so. As you may know, YouTube arbitrarily demonetized our channel, so I'd like to thank Lutzis.com's first sponsor, Atlas VPN, for supporting us and providing a service that is actually useful as we move into our new cyberpunk dystopia. Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month, with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't happy with the service. Follow the link in the description to sign up. You'll be liberated from region locks, so you can watch streaming content from anywhere in the world, but I think more importantly is that it masks your IP. Firstly, this prevents us from being spied upon by the various state dragnets. We find it important that it keeps your Google searches private, which prevents them from tailoring the results based on your past searches, which prevents them from hiding information because they've built up a profile against us. It also protects you from being the target of malicious ads, trackers, and malware, and informs you when someone is trying to steal your data. There has been a spate of people getting their accounts hacked recently, and Atlas VPN helps protect against that. Atlas VPN is also easy to install. Even I could do it without assistance. What you're seeing now is the footage I recorded of myself in Installing the thing. Once you're logged in, you can see that you just need to click on the location that you want to tell the internet where you want to be from, and you're all set. To repeat then, Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month with a three month extra and a 30 day money back guarantee if you aren't happy with the service. Follow the link in the video description to sign up, and remember, supporting them is supporting us, so please do check them out. Uh, what do you think? The problem really is short termism. So politicians and it's been going on for, for 50 years. Politicians now are career politicians, and a career politician wants to be voted in at the next election. Yeah. They're not looking at, they're not planning for 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. So as a career politician, and they're worried about an election in 18 months' time, all they're doing is trying to throw a little bit of meat to the people um, that doesn't disturb anything, they just want the status quo so they can be voted in again. And that's at the heart of all our problems in the UK and across the Western world. And what do you have to... Yeah, I, I fear it's much more pernicious than that, much more sinister than that. Um, it seems now that one of the worst crimes you can commit, the thought crime of noticing, you dare not be allowed to notice that you're having crimes committed against you on sort of a civilizational level, um, that your people are, are, are blown up at concerts or on a bus or on a train, or your children are stabbed in a park for no reason, uh, that you're not allowed to notice. I think it's in 1980, well, it is in 1984, where Orwell says the party insists, the thing it insists upon most is that you don't believe the evidence of your own eyes and ears. That's what they're asking us yeah. now. It's that insane. It's to not pose the question, the, the, the elephant in the room question. Mm, yeah, don't notice. Don't notice the elephant, the elephant that's, that's trampling you. Yeah. Because it's against diversity and the values that we're supposed to be uh, in favor of. Now, I, I, I don't think it's that. I think it's don't notice it, because if you notice it and you demand answers and actions, then you will see as a politician how pathetic I am and how weak I am and how I've got no ideas. So I want you not to notice it, because if you don't notice it, I can carry on pretending I'm a good politician. If you notice it, this house of cards falls down. That's why they don't want you to notice it. That's an interesting uh, thing. I'll have to think about it, but I, th I think you have a point there. Now, let's go to the next tweet, which is by you, Nick, and it's yep. good to have the opportunity to ask the author of this quote tweet more about what, what you mean. You, you are saying here, our police forces have been failing for decades because they do not recruit only on merit any longer, but engage in box ticking. 
The best person for the job should always get the job. We need a royal commission into policing for the 21st century. What did, what did you have in mind? And I'll let this video playing in the background. Yeah. No. So this video is showing four police officers trying to invest two youths and they can't. The reason why they can't is because two of the police officers are women who are just not strong enough. And that's not a criticism of women. We all know women are not as strong as men. But we've got, we want a police service now that reflects the community. And do you know what? I don't want that. I want the best person for the job. And the best person for the job will be males. That's not to say there's no room for females in the police force. But if you're tackling a six foot four burglar, let me put this to you. Let's say you have a burglar and you're robbing someone's house and you've got your sack and you're putting some jewelry in it and you hear a police siren outside and you run to the front window and you look outside. And there's a 17 stone, six foot five, burly police officer stood in the garden. And you go, I'm going out the back. So you run to the back. And outside the back is a five foot, seven stone police woman. And you've got to go through the front door or the back door. We all know which door you're going through. And that's because she's not built for that job. And that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is, you know, the police also then wanted to start reflecting diversity of the communities they represent, which sounds great on paper, yeah. but we don't have those quotas for doctors or dentists or anything else, but we do for the police. So what happens is you there's certain parts of any community who'd make good police officers in every community. But let's say, let's look at the Asian community. So those individuals who'd make good police officers are being told by their mum and dad, you're not being a police officer. You're being a doctor. You're being a surgeon. You're being a barrister. So they don't join the police. So what we have to do then is we have to reduce the recruitment process mm -hmm. to make sure we get some Asian people to join the police. So they're inferior because they weren't good enough in the first place. The ones who would have made great police officers have got a better career. So we employ those people. And then what happens? Not good police officers. So we have to fire them or they're incompetent. And once you fire them, that sends a signal out that, oh, Asian people are not welcome in the police force. Well, no, that wasn't the case. There was, the case was we took someone incompetent, tried to turn him into a good police officer. It failed and we've had to sack him. Hence why we have a police force that we have now. They're not, lots of them are not fit for the job because we just box ticked. And I think that this raises uh, issues of uh, meritocracy because um, we have, This raises some issues of meritocracy because if the whole thing is about box ticking, then we can't be certain that we have the right person for the job. And who is the right person for the job? When we talk about police, it's the people who can enforce the law. It's, it's not a joke. It's, it's serious. And it seems to me to reflect the short-termism that you, you, mm. you mentioned before because it's not just about uh, ticking the boxes and thinking of who is it going to look well good to employ it's also how can we protect the community you need to think a bit more long term than that we do and part of the problem happened when we started changing police forces into police service yeah. and we don't need a police service we need a police force because police are dealing with a lot of time violent criminals and you need force for that but when we started developing these police services it was about we need to represent the communities i've worked in dozens and dozens of diverse communities across Greater Manchester. And I've never met a black person, an Asian person, a Chinese person, a gay person who said to me, do you know what? I want to see police who look like me. Yeah. They all say, I want to see more police in my neighborhood. That's what I want to see. I want criminals caught. I'm sick of being burgled. I'm sick of my car being broken into. When you're a victim of crime, you don't care who those police officers are. You just want good, decent police officers on your streets. And that's what we're missing. I think that one, it's really important to talk about this because we have an orchestrated attempt to present the DIE agenda, the agenda of diversity, inclusivity, and equity as being the fundamental cornerstone of the value system of Western societies. And honestly, I don't think it is. And uh, we, what about? let's say, reason and science. Let, let me just say one thing, because in science, for instance, we try to explain phenomena, and we try to explain phenomena by focusing on their causes and by understanding what brings them about. 
And the same applies for political phenomena as well. So when we have, for instance, a Western society that has been built to a large extent, not entirely, but to a large extent by the institution of science, well, why should we stop posing questions? Why should we stop posing questions that come to mind? And the major question here is whether, for instance, illegal, uncontrolled migration leads into increase of crime. I don't think that this is a question that we are allowed to pose anymore. Yeah, no, again, it's one of those topics that you're just not supposed to ever think about, let alone talk about, let alone really grapple with. And because, again, it's like a cornerstone of the entire sort of leftist, or should we say globalist worldview, that, that we're all the same, that all cultures are completely equal and that uh, everyone is of value. <laughs> and there's no such thing as barbaric values. It's, it's just complete nonsense. But they have to insist upon the liar. You're not allowed to question that lie, and it is a lie, because uh, their whole house of cards tumbles down very quickly as well. Exactly. They don't even pose the question of what are the values of you know, distinct people. There are all sorts of cultural continuities and discontinuities between host groups and groups that are hosted. And this is something that is not allowed to be, uh, to be discussed. It's at least the way I see it. Now, there, there, we, we should pose these questions and we should talk about these questions because, frankly, there may be interesting answers there. Now, speaking of, of interesting answers to, the, to questions that we are not allowed to, to pose, you can visit a website and you can have for, for five pounds a month, you could have access to all our premium content and you could watch discussions like uh, these, Live Hangout 35, where Carl and Callum are talking about grooming gangs. Uh, they examine a timeline of the history of the grooming gangs as publicly known. And this is something that is a very heavy topic, but we need to talk about it and we need to talk about it more. So by all means, visit our website and with just five pounds a month, you can have access to all our premium content. Okay, so one of the things that seems to me to be very weird is that we constantly listen to crimes happening and we are to think that they are sort of isolated incidents. And when everything is presented as an isolated incident, what is essentially communicated is that you're not allowed to question whether there is a pattern here. Mm. How does this sound? To a certain extent, these are isolated incidents. Um, but that's not the issue. Yeah. The issue is... The first duty of any government is to protect the citizens of that country. And that's the first priority of any government. And, you know, we've got tens of millions of immigrants across Europe. And every now and again, we get something like this. You know, every couple of days, there'll be something like this. When you look at that percentage of the millions that have come, it's a tiny, tiny, small percentage. But again, that's not the problem. And the problem is, why are we taking a chance inviting people, allowing people into our country who have not been vetted, who some pose a danger, some are criminals, some will be psychopaths. And even if, even if we give some credit there, as in it'll be the same percentage of the general population, but again, that's not the point because why are we allowing one criminal into the country? Because that poses a risk itself. And the reason why we don't talk about it or nobody wants us to talk about it it goes back to my first point, because if we talk about it, the people then will demand answers. The politicians don't have answers because they don't have backbones yeah. and they can see the problems. And all they're thinking about is, I don't want to cause a storm for two years because I'm up for election. Yeah. But wh when you say that there are isolated incidents, in, in one sense, every action is an isolated yeah. action. But isn't there a value in posing the question as to what are the conditions that may lead to increased chances of these events taking place. And that's the, the immigration side of it. That's yeah. allowing at the moment, I mean, let's be honest at the moment, anybody from anywhere in the world can get to Europe. Yeah. No checks, no border control, get a boat across a little river or a little sea and you're in Europe, then get another boat across the English Channel and you're in the UK. That's unprecedented. We've, we've yeah. never seen anything like this before. And the fact our government cannot secure our... And we're in Ireland. It's harder for France. It's harder for Germany. But it should be a lot easier for us. And the fact we can't do it is, is absolutely shocking. 
And there is a danger there. I mean, it's not just immigrants themselves. I mean, most of all, I don't know about most, but you look at the Albanians, organized crime. They're not fleeing. They're not fleeing anything. And we had an asylum seeker the other day got housing in um, Oldham in Greater Manchester. And her reason, domestic violence in, in Rwanda. So now we're taking people suffering supposedly from domestic violence. Or if you're gay from Africa, that's enough now to claim asylum somewhere. We've just got open doors. Yeah. And the biggest problem I feel is who was ever asked? Who was ever asked about any immigration? Who was asked about European immigration? And you're from Greece. Yeah. So who, who was ever asked? Who was ever asked about immigration from Africa or from Syria or from the Ukraine who are white people? We were never asked about any of this. It's always imposed upon us because the people with the power to impose it on us suffer no consequences because they're already well off. They have already have gated communities. They, they're they not competing for the low-paid jobs and trying to get their kids in school or see a doctor. It, it's They don't suffer because of this. Let's uh, ha- hear Bo on this, and then I'll say why I asked this because some of what happened to Greece in 2015. <clears throat> But do, do you want to add something on that? Well, I would say there absolutely is a pattern. There absolutely is a pattern. The pattern of who who does beheadings in the street? Is there a pattern there? Of course there is. Who, who blows up public transport? It all depends. Well, yeah, I mean, we had 30 years so, ago, it would have been the IRA. Right, but not 30 years ago, yeah, now. Though. Now, yeah. So, so I think to deny that there is a pattern at all is to put your head in the sand. It's a, it's a terrible and unbelievable reality, but there is one. Uh, just look at statistics of... <laughs> who commits certain types of crime. Um, History Debunked, Simon Dover, History Debunked, who's a contributor for Lotus Eaters, uh, is very good on this sort of thing. It's just being honest with, it's a terrible, terrible truth, but just being honest with the patterns that are there. But again, it's, it's that when we say you're not allowed to notice, that is really what you're not allowed to notice, pattern recognition. Um, because, you know, well, you'll be automatically branded as, as a bigot or a racist or just a Nazi or something. Well, well then... We shall have to suffer those insults because I'm not going to lie to myself. I refuse to do that. And that's what it is, first and foremost. That's what they want. You want they want you to lie to yourself first, and then you can project out that lie. Well, I refuse, and so should everyone else. That's the first battle, first and foremost, in yourself, to refuse, to refuse that. One incident that took place in Greece, and this is why I asked mm. about the pattern, is that, for instance, in 2015, we had a, a unemployment rate of around 30%, and the government that was elected there, the Syriza government, they opened the borders, and in a whole year, we had an influx of 10% of Greece's population in one year. Now, in a country... Syriza, sorry, they're socialists, right? Yeah. The Coalition of Radical Left is their, uh, what they mean. They, they opened the borders and we had in one year the entire 10% influx of the, popula- of the country's population. Mm. The equivalent for UK would be 7 million, to give you a, a number uh, to, to bear in mind. So there's a question there as to when you have an economy that you don't make it more competitive, because that was the, the whole... Uh, issue of that party to prevent the economy from being competitive. When you have unemployment rates of 30% in your own country, domestic unemployment rate, how is adding 10% of the population to the mix going to make things better? And that's not to say anything about individual people, as may say, it's all about an explosive social mix. Mm. So let's have a look at some of the isolated incidents that took place this June. Now, one of the one of the videos here is the one where we saw a person in Syria, in sorry, a Syrian migrant in France, who went in Annecy and uh, stabbed children in a park and also people. Uh, luckily, I think no one died, but that's not because of what this person did. That's because of you know of him not succeeding in killing them. So this uh, person here was not someone who came right now from Libya. He was in Sweden. He had the asylum status in Sweden, and he just wanted to go to France and get asylum status in France and was rejected three times, 
and went there and he uh, st he went there stabbing people. Now, one thing to notice here is that the reception here was really, really, really interesting. Uh, when we had this video, I remember the, the mm. day, uh, they, uh, they started taking it down, even from Twitter. People were, they were told to take it down. And it seems to me, if we also have a look here, that there was an orchestrated attempt to present this incident as an incident that is an isolated one, and that, God forbid, anyone should talk about the issue of, let's say, uncontrolled migration. Now we have here, some days ago, we have Anas's mayor, who described the town as a refuge for those fleeing war days before a Syrian migrant knife attack on toddlers. And he said, Anas is a land of resistance to fascism, a land of solidarity, uh, and that was the may mayor, Francois Astorg, who said this in a response to a nationalist march through the town. Now, I take issue with this because when people are named fascist just because they may raise this question, that's really that's really bad. Basically, that's that's uh, it's maddening. This Astorg is yeah. an evil person. Yeah. A maniac, and people like him, people like Macron, people, any sort of globalist like this who instantly try and defend the criminal, uh, that their first thought is to stop any backlash, it is to try and stop people noticing the barbaric crimes. That knife man was a true barbarian. And the people, this Astog fella, and I, use, I don't use the word evil all that often, I certainly don't use it lightly. That is an evil thing to do, to go there straight away with it. It's indicative. It seems to me that this is a kind of politician that cares more about how to appear in the, to handle this in a communicative fashion, in a performative fashion, than sympathizing with the people. This was some days ago, but mm. it illustrates the whole, uh, the whole way of operation. We can have here this, again, this... Uh, by the Independent. It says, the troubling news of the knife attack in Annecy, France is a multiple tragedy. The six people, including four young children, are the obvious victims and will deserve everyone's best wishes. Sadly, many will seize upon the assailant's refugee status in Sweden as proof that borders should be closed and that all refugees are nothing but ready-made criminals. Hopefully, many more people will recognize that the stabbings are no indication of the wider refugee crisis. Now, this is an open question. That, that, that leaves that's the way I see it. Several things are going on here. So first of all, we need to understand this mayor, what his vision of the world and his country is. And his vision of the country will be, there shouldn't be a country. <clears throat> there should be a world nation. And he probably believes we're heading that direction anyway. And all we need to do is speed it up. If we can mix Asia, Africa, North and South America with Europe, and we all start mingling, we will get a world global citizen. And that's, and that's his aim. And everything you do in life, there will be collateral damage. So he puts these kids down to collateral damage of being stabbed for overarching good that will come once we create this global world with no borders, no wars, no disparities between um, income and confusion. He's got this utopian dream. And that's, what, and that's why people who talk about this say these things. Now, the knife attack, I mean, if you're mentally ill or you're a psychopath and you're living somewhere in the world, anywhere in the world, the odds of you moving to a new town, a new place are quite high because once people realize you're a psychopath, evil, not a nice person, your life becomes unlivable there. So those people are always moving on. And I've opened borders have really allowed psychopaths from anywhere in the world to migrate to somewhere better and then we're surprised when they're still psychopathic when they get here and do terrible things like this. Let's watch isolated incident number two here. I'm sure you have seen this. I think this was, this was hor horrendous. This, I mean, because it's a better video, this is more shocking than anything else we've yeah. seen. This is absolutely horrendous, this. Yeah. For those who who are listening to us without yeah. watching, we see uh, a man in France trying to forcefully abduct a young 
girl from a woman. We don't know if it's her mother or grandmother or... I think it's her grandmother. I don't know if he was actually trying to abduct her or not. I think he was trying just trying to get something. It doesn't really matter, actually, does it? It doesn't matter. He he, he Um, was stealing something. He he wasn't trying to... He was stealing something, yeah. Yeah. The point is, is that the reality is that things like incidents like that actually play out loads. This one just happens to have been caught on camera and then gone viral on Twitter. But in fact, the reality is that all sorts of fairly low level violence and intimidation, horrible crimes, really, are being perpetrated across the West by foreigners. And that is a pattern. That is just simply a fact. Um, And so, yeah, it's, it's sickening to see. I mean, it's absolutely sickening to see. And the people that their first knee jerk reaction is that let's not talk. Let's not have a conversation about mass immigration or noticing patterns. Okay, they are the problem, those people. I have here some information that says the attacker is a 30-year-old man who is homeless and has been in in and out of police custody for many cases before. As per the authorities, the man has 20 offenses against his name, Mm. including violence and kidnapping. At the moment, the police are conducting an extensive investigation to find out the reason behind the attack. Now, let's go to Greece, because there was committed a horrible crime in the island of Kos, that is in the eastern uh, side of uh, the Aegean Sea. Now, we have a 27-year-old Polish woman who was uh, murdered, and uh, it looks like she was was, uh, tortured before that. I will will just say, um, this is a tweet by Ada Lutsch. This beautiful lady was named Anastasia Patricia Rubinska, and she was 27. She moved from Poland to Greece to work during the holidays. She was reportedly being found naked and wrapped in a plastic bag on the Greek island of Kos. Four Pakistani and Bangladeshi men kidnapped and murdered her while she was going to meet her boyfriend. Once again, it says the theory is proved, having an open border and letting everyone enter your country without a filter is a threat to every citizen. It's not about racism, it's about safety. Now... Exactly. Yeah. Com- completely agree. Yeah. Now, let's go here to look a bit about the incident. Yeah, I, I, I won't read much because it's, it's horrible. Uh, if you want to read more about it, you, you can enter this link and see it. Uh, but it's, it's good if we don't exactly describe uh, exactly how she was uh, tortured and killed. Now, there's another incident, though, because there have been other women who have said and accused grooming gangs in Kos. And uh, this is another article. It says, woman testifies about her near rape by the Pakistani friend of Bangladeshi who killed Polish woman. Now, let's scroll down a bit. It says, a chilling testimony implicates a Pakistani friend of the 32-year-old Bangladeshi man accused of the murder of 25-year-old Polish woman Anastasia in Kos. A 30-year-old woman claims she almost fell victim to rape 20 meters from where Anastasia Rubinska bo- body was found on the Greek island of Kos by a man belonging to the very close circle of the 32-year-old beginning of June. So basically, if you see, if we look at her testimony, they tried to spike her drinks and they tried in the exact same uh, place to do what they did to the other poor lady, which involved uh, torture, raping, and then disfigurement of the body so fingertips would not be found. Um, it's a serious issue. I think we, we need to be thinking about safety and talking about this. And sometimes, you know, there's a question of, the, of, of risks and whether we want Western societies to become, let's say, a lab for uh, ex- globalist experiments. Hmm. That's why I described someone like Macron, or you could say that guy for Hofstadt or um, that witch van der Leyen. These are maniacs. These are maniacs that have abandoned the concept of borders. They, yeah, they don't care at all about safety. Or if they do, they want none. They actively want no safety. It's, it's insane. And even a few decades ago when I was coming up, it just wasn't the case, right? When you were younger, Nick, it just wasn't the case. Governments used to actually look out for the safety of their citizens, at least on some level, mm-hmm. at least in part. Now, not only have they abandoned that charge, they're actively making it worse every single day. These are maniacs. 
Right. And uh, let's go for, for last uh, bit to end this segment. Let's go to Manchester. Uh, again, Nick, this is a tweet from you. Yep. Uh, you write, this nightmare never ends. The councils and the police failed many young girls in Greater Manchester over decades. I intend to hold senior police officers accountable if they failed in their duty. I will sack them if proven. And you are talking about a case here that I would really like to hear from you uh, in person about... Uh, Uh, men accused of being in Rochdale grooming gang to go on trial in 2024. Yeah, uh, we have here the links for uh, what happened, but I would I would like to hear from you if you have. Um... Yeah, so I don't want to go into too much detail about this particular thing because these gentlemen have not gone to court yet. So um, you know, that's a different matter. But we've had this all, and the beginning of my tweet was, "Will this nightmare ever end?" Because it's almost daily if not daily, every couple of days, there's a new case in the papers of more people being arrested, more people going to court for the for grooming and, you know, the grooming gang scandal in Rochdale, in Manchester, all over the country, and it never seems to end. And it's not like all these are dated cases from 30 years ago. This is still going on now. Um, and we know from the reports that have been written, it's, predominantly a Pakistani Muslim crime. Paedophilia isn't. You know, I've had that up to three, four different men arrested for paedophilia. They're all white in different cases. So this isn't that all Muslims are paedophiles or all Pakistani men are paedophiles. But this particular part of paedophilia, the grooming of vulnerable girls, plying them with alcohol, drugs, takeaways, free taxi rides is predominantly a Muslim Pakistani problem. And the reason why it is a problem is because in our society, our young vulnerable girls are seen as trash. And part of that is our fault because we over-sexualize women in our society. Um, it was only 10 years ago I saw some thongs for children, five-year-old, six-year-old thongs for girls with a picture of Chevy on the front saying, eat me. And we're buying them for five-year-old girls in our country. These girls also had no fathers at home. So when you take away a father from a home, you leave that family and those children vulnerable to criminals and to pedophiles. So part of this problem, we need to take some responsibility ourselves as a culture for setting this up for them to be abused. Now, when we're looking at this, you know, these men, let's say these men all get convicted or other men have been convicted they go back to their communities. They're not shunned. They're not shamed. They live in the same houses, do the same jobs. The wives don't leave them. The children don't leave them. And that's because it's seen as not really a crime. Those white tarts were asking for it. And white children are dirty anyway, so you can do what you want with them, as long as it's not a Muslim girl. So part of this is cultural. Part of it links to their religion, but it really is cultural. And how do we tackle this? Well, we ta this leads on from the immigration things before. Most of these people or their descendants are not illegal immigrants. They were legal immigrants. But again, we were never asked. And they were never, ever um, brought into the fold of the UK. You know, they've built their own communities in Oldham, in other parts, where it's, it's like a mini Pakistan. It's a mini Bangladesh. It's a mini Rwanda. It's a mini Nigeria. And we never should allow that. They should have assimilated into the culture. And we fail these people because we allow them to come here for a better life, but we allow them to bring their failing culture with them. So they come here, they set up their failing culture, which didn't work in their homeland. And we wonder why they fail in this culture, because they didn't embrace a better culture. Here, I think, is where we see the woke, let's say, animosity towards institutions. Because when you have frequently countries that are hosts of uh, plenty of immigrants. You, th there's a thing about their institutions. So why people choose to come to the UK, for instance? Why do people choose to go to Europe or to the US? It's primarily about institutions. But we see that the, the same people who say, let's open the borders and have uncontrolled migration, they're the same people who seem to attack these institutions day and night. I, th I think that's a... That, that's something that has to be raised. They mean only the worst for our society, for our civilization. They mean to destroy it. 
I think only in a very, very limited sense, Nick, have we failed anybody. I mean, I, I do accept in, on some level the over sexualization of our modern society, but only in a very limited sense have we failed anybody. Their, their values are antithetical to ours. That's not our fault. I won't accept any guilt for that. But they, what, they, if, they, if that's how they're going to be, to endlessly groom white children, well, that's, that's a cancer in our civil society. And what do you do with a cancer? You don't reason with it. You cut it out. Hmm. You say they go back to their jobs. They go back to their families. They're certainly not deported. They need to be deported. Okay? We need a government and a home office with some goddamn balls that will deport these people. Yep. It's and as simple as that. Get rid of them. And how do we get that? We get that by having better politicians, better government. And how do we get that? We get that by voting for it and ensuring we get it. That's part of what I mean by we failed because we, we've allowed this to happen. Everybody in this country has allowed these things to happen by not stand. People are beginning to stand up now, but even now it's only several people. You know, it's still not a mass movement of saying, how, how dare you have allowed this to happen to our country? We've not held one politician to account. We're bringing it upon ourselves and we're doing it mainly because we see it as we don't want to cause a fuss. We want to be polite. We want to be welcoming. Well, w- welcoming. But again, it's, it's, we live in a democracy. All the problems in a democracy are down to the people. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult when they sort of really quite actively suppress parties, hmm. right? They're actively suppressed p- parties, right-leaning parties. Well, you, you haven't got an option often to vote for anyone other than the mainstream parties. Yeah, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but we do need, if we're going to solve this, we need to look at the root causes. And the root causes are the British people have not taken their democracy serious enough. And we've allowed our politicians to be our masters and not our servants. Well, I would say every prime minister and home office uh, minister since 97 should be brought to account for their crimes against this country. I'd go back even further. Yeah, okay. I'd go back even All further. Right. Yeah. Poke, poke second world war. 